Joining me now is Atiba Manoun. He's a political analyst and president of Party Politics U.S., a group that collects data from American voters. Really a remarkable day yesterday, almost jaw-dropping. And you could sense it when you watch Sarah Huckabee Sanders come and talk to the reporters today. She looked dejected, down. Is this a turning point for Trump and his administration? Well, we keep thinking that it's a turning point every time something like this happens. But this was pretty, pretty damning, uh, damaging. In terms of when you look at what uh, Sarah's uh, body language in terms of how she responded, and she kept saying the same thing over and over again. We start to wonder, is the president really becoming more and more concerned with what, with what is going on? But you know, the, the questions today have been, is he going to pardon Manafort? I think it's pretty, we pretty much already know he's going to. The question is more so when. Is he going to stop the Mueller investigation? We know that past, you know, from what he's been talking about and what Giuliani has been talking about, his attorney, is that he needs to shut the investigation down by September 1st. But where this is going to go, I think that's one of the things that the president is enjoying. He keeps us moving around trying to figure out what's next. But what happens if he pardons Manafort? I mean, isn't there, isn't there blowback from that? I mean, it's, it's the same sort of thing as if, if he ends the Mueller investigation. I mean, both of those have their own sense of peril, don't they? I feel like we're living in an alternative universe. You know, we keep hearing these terms, alt-right, and et cetera. But everything that has been normal in the past politically is not normal anymore. So when we look at what the president is doing, it's kind of like this episode of uh, his show, The Apprentice, where he was firing. He had a room full of people. You never knew who he was going to fire next. We don't know. And you know, I think a lot of times viewers want to know, well, what's next? We really don't know what's going to happen next. And we don't know exactly how this is going to play out. What we do know is historically, if you look back to President Nixon's administration, um, there were things that he did to stop or to try and stop his investigation. And we saw how that ended up being perilous to his uh, administration. And he eventually resigned. Um, what will happen this year in November with our election? Will the Democrats take over? Will they come in and, and have an all-out assault on the president if he's still in office? There's, there's just so, so much um, here on the, on the table. Well, you brought up uh, Watergate. Back in those days, they had hearings. Uh, there, there are no calls for hearings today. I heard one analyst say, uh, what you see with the Republicans is a lack of courage. What you see with Democrats is they have no spine. It doesn't seem like there's it, the, the normal mechanisms like you're talking about. We're not even seeing those up on Capitol Hill. Again, alternate universe. So normally we would think that Congress would call hearings and bring people before for, to talk about what's going on. We've seen some hearings we've seen uh, in the past, but we keep hearing this question about collusion. I think that we need to move past that conversation about collusion and start talking about really focusing on obstruction of justice. The other thing is, uh, we're here in Washington where everybody talks about Washington, but uh, it is the kind of center of what goes on. And it's not just uh, domestic, it's international. Um, right now we're having these hearings about the tariffs. We're going to talk about that in this broadcast. But I'm curious, if, you, if you're a country, if, if you're the European Union, if you're Mexico, Canada, China, you have dealings where you're trying to get something done, is the administration so fixated on this now that they can't get the business done at hand, in a sense. Is the administration fixated, or are the president's employees fixated on it? Because I think they're fixated on damage control. But the policy implications of everything that comes from the White House, for instance, you mentioned tariffs, how is that going to impact the American people? How is that going to impact our pockets? How is it going to impact other countries? What the president is doing, he's made this about himself since day one. I mean, if you think about it, if people are questioning or wondering if the president is telling the truth, all we have to do is go back to January 20th and January 21st when Sean Spicer came before um, the press and said, hey, this was the largest inauguration in the history of the country, what, yet our eyes told us there was a lot of space that was there on that ground, especially compared to the previous president and Obama. So we keep having the president almost like a child who gets in trouble and says it wasn't me. And we, as if we don't remember the things that happened before, because there's so many things coming at us. You're in the data business. Uh, what's your sense about what's going to happen in November? I mean, what are, what are you hearing from people? People are upset, but then you have people on the right who are happy about what's going on because they feel like they they've got a champion for them. They keep talking about well, they got tax cuts, and they feel that like the economy is doing well. But the question is, the economy might be doing well for the wealthy, but it's not doing well for the people who are on Main Street. There are a lot of people that are still trying to grapple in terms of where do they fit in this. And so I think that there are those who are his supporters who believe like if we keep supporting him, if we keep, keep him where he is, he's going to fix our problems. Then you have a lot more people on the left, 
or in, in terms of when I talk about the left, the liberals and moderates, who are very fixated on this idea that this is that time, this is going to be the piece that's going to get him impeached. But we still have a long road to go, a long way to go before any of this is fixed. So what will you be watching for in November? Will the Democrats take the House? Um, there's slight chance that they could take the Senate, but it's really a question, will there be voter suppression? There, we've already seen things that are going on in several states in terms of um, precincts being closed in Georgia, for instance, and particularly African-American communities. Whether or not people are going to come out and vote, are they going to be so sick and tired of all the things that are com coming on and they're going to actually voice their vote and, and be a part of the democracy, or are they going to sit on the sideline? I know. We'll be watching for all of it. Atiba, always a pleasure having you on the broadcast. Thank Thanks you. so much.